Let fame, that all hunt after in their lives, live registered upon our brazen tools, and then grace us in the disgrace of death. When, spite of Corman and devouring time, the endeavor of this present breath may buy that honor which shall bait his side's keen edge and make us heirs of all eternity. Therefore, brave conquerors, for so you are that war against your own affections and the huge army of the world's desires, our late edict shall strongly stand in force. Navarre shall be the wonder of the world. Our court shall be a little academe, still and contemplative in living art. You three, Biron, Dumaine, and Longueville have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes that are recorded in this schedule here. The odds are passed. Now subscribe your names. I am resolved. It is but a three years past. The mind shall banquet, though the body pies. Fat paunches have lean pates, and dainty bits make rich the ribs, but bankrupt quite the wits. My loving lord, Dumaine is mortified. The grosser manner of these worlds delights he throws upon the gross world's baser slaves. To love, to wealth, to pomp, I pine and die, with all these living in philosophy. I can but say their protestation over so much, dear liege, have I already sworn, that is to live and study here three years. But <laughs> there are other strict observances, as not to see a woman in that term, which I hope well is not enrolled there. And one day in the week to touch no food, and but one meal on every day beside, the which I hope is not enrolled there. And then to sleep but three hours in the night and not be seen to wink of all the day, when I was going to think no harm all night and make a dark night too of half the day, the which I hope is not enrolled there. Oh, these are barren tasks, too hard to keep. Not to see ladies, study, fast, not sleep. Your oath is passed to pass away from these. Let me say no, my liege, and if you please. I only swore to study with your grace and stay here in your court for three years. You swore to that, Barone, and to the rest. <laughs> By yea and nay, sir, then I swore in jest. What is the end of study? Let me know. Why, that to know which else we would not know. <laughs> study is like the heaven's glorious sun. that will not be deep searched with saucy looks. Small have continual plodders ever won, save base authority from others' books. These earthly godfathers of heaven's lights that give a name to every fixed star have no more profit of their shining nights than those that walk and what not what they are. Too much to know is to know naught but fame, and every godfather can give a name. Well, sit you out. Go home, Baron. Adieu. No! My good lord, I have sworn to stay with you. And though I have for barbarism spoke more than for that angel knowledge you can say, yet confident, <laughs> I'll keep what I have sworn and bide the penance of each three years' day. Give me the paper, let me read the same, and to the strict decrees I'll write my name. How well this yielding rescues thee from shame. <sighs> Item, that no woman shall come within a mile of my court. Had this been proclaimed? Four days ago. Okay. Let's see the penalty. On pain of losing her tongue. Who devised this penalty? I'd have to die. Sweet Lord, and why? Break them hence with that dread penalty. A dangerous law against gentility. Item. If any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years, he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise. This article, my liege, yourself must bring. For well, you know, here comes an embassy, the French king's daughter, with yourself to speak. A maid of grace and complete majesty. About surrender of a backwater to her decrepit, sick and bedridden father. Therefore, this article is made in vain, or vainly comes the admired princess hither. What say you, lords, why this was quite forgot? So study evermore is overshot. 
We must have forced dispense with this decree. She must lie here on mere necessity. Necessity will make us all forsworn 3,000 times within this three year space. But I believe, although I seem so loath, I am the last that will last keep his oath. <laughs> <laughs> but is there no quick recreation granted? Aye, that there is. Our court, you know, is haunted with a refined traveller of Spain, a man in all the world's new fashion planted that hath a mint of phrases in his brain. This child of fancy that Armado height for interim to our studies shall relate in high-born words the worth of many a knight from tawny Spain lost in the world's debate. Armado is a most illustrious wight, a man of fire new words, fashions a knight. <laughs> Cost out the swain and he shall be our sport, and so to study three years is but short. Which is the joke's own person? This fellow, what word? <laughs> I myself reprehend his own person, for I am his grace's Barbara. But I would see his own person in flesh and blood. This is he. Senior arm... Arm... Mother. I commend you. There's villainy abroad. This letter will tell you more. Uh, the matter is to me, sir, as concerning Jack Winnetter. The manner of it is I was taken with the manner. In what manner? All in manner and form following, sir, all those three. I was seen with her in the manor house, sitting with her upon the form and taken following her into the park, which put together is in manner and form following. Now it is the manner of a man to speak to a woman for the form in some form. <laughs> Great deputy, the Welkin's vice regent and sole dominator of Navarre, my soul's earth's god and body's fostering patron. Not a word of costard yet. <laughs> so it is. Maybe so, but if he says it is so, he isn't telling true but so. Peace. Be to me and every man that dares not fight. No words. Other men's secrets, I beseech you. So it is, besieged with sable-coloured melancholy. I did commend the black oppressing humour to the most wholesome physic of thy health-giving air, and as I am a gentleman, betook myself to walk. The time when? About the sixth hour, when be beasts most graze, birds best peck, and men sit down to that nourishment which is called supper. <laughs> so much for the time when, now for the ground which, which I mean I walked upon, it is eclept by park, then for the place where. Where, I mean, I did encounter that obscene and most preposterous event that draweth from my snow-white pen the ebon-coloured ink, which here thou viewest, beholdest, surveyest, or seest. But to the place where? It standeth north, northeast, and by east from the west corner of thy curious knotted garden. There did I see that low-spirited swain, that base minnow of thy mirth, May? that unlettered small-knowing soul, May? that shallow vassal, which, as I remember, height costard. Oh, me. Sorted and consorted contrary to thy established proclaimed edict and continent canon. Which with? Oh, with. But with this I passion to say, where with? With a wench. With a child of our grandmother Eve, a female, or for thy more sweet understanding, a woman. Him, I, as my ever esteemed duty pricks me on, have sent to thee to receive the need of punishment by thy sweet grace's officer, Anthony Dull, a man of good repute, carriage, bearing, and estimation. A and shall please you. I am Anthony Dull. For Jaquanetta. So is the weaker vessel called, which I apprehended with the aforesaid swain. Keep her as a vessel of thy law's fury, and shall at the least of thy sweet notice bring her to trial. Thine in all compliments of devoted and heart-burning heat of duty. Don Adriano de Armado. No, this is not so well as I looked for, but the best I ever heard. Aye, the best for the worst. But, Sirrah, what say you to this? Sir, I confess the wench. Did you hear the proclamation? 
Who can face much of the hearing of it, little of the marking of it. Ah. It was proclaimed a year's imprisonment to be taken with a wench. Oh, I was taken with none, sir. I was taken with a damsel. Well, it was proclaimed, damsel. She was no damsel neither, sir. She was a virgin. It is so varied, too, for it was proclaimed virgin. If it were, I deny her virginity. I was taken with a maid. This maid will not serve your turn, sir. Oh, this maid will serve my turn, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I will pronounce your sentence. You shall fast a week on bran and water. Soon a prey a month on mutton and porridge. And Don Armado shall be your keeper. <laughs> my lord, be rolled. See him deliver door. And go we, lords, to put in practice that which each to other hath so strongly sworn. Boy, what sign is it when a man of great spirit grows melancholy? Great sign, sir, that he will look sad. Why, sadness is one of the same, same thing, dear imp. No, oh, Lord, sir, no. Oh, how canst thou part sadness and melancholy, my tender Hubbardal? By a familiar demonstration of the working, mm. my tough senior. Mm. Why tough senior? Why tough senior? Why tender Hubbardal? Why tender Hubbardal? I spoke it, tender Hubbardal, as a congruent epitheton appertaining to thy young days, which we may nominate tender. And I, tough senior, as an appurtenant title to your old time, which we may name Tough. <laughs> I have promised to study three years with the Duke. You may do it in an hour, sir. Impossible. How many is one price told? Oh, uh, I am merely reckoning it. It is the spirit of a tapster. You are a gentleman and a gangster, sir. I will hear upon confidence. I am in love. <laughs> and as it is love, base for a soldier to love, so am I in love with a base wife. Uh, comfort me, boy. What great men have been in love? Hercules, master. Ah, most sweet Hercules. More authority, dear boy, no more. And sweet, my child, let them be men of good repute and carriage. Master, hmm? he was a man of great carriage, great carriage. Well, he carried the town gates on his back like a porter, and he was in love. <laughs> well, Nick Samson, strong pointed Samson, <laughs> I do excel thee in my rapier, as thou didst me in carrying gates. I am in love too. I do love that the country girl I took in the park with the rational hind costard. She deserves well. To be whipped. And it's a better love for my master. Sing, boy, my spirit grows heavy in love. And that's a great marvel, loving a light wench. I say sing. For better till this company be passed. Mm. <laughs> Sir, the Duke's pleasure is that you keep Costard safe. And you must suffer him to take no delight nor no pleasure, but a must fast three days a week. For well, this damsel, we must keep her at the park. She is allowed for the day, woman. Fare you well. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I do betray myself with blushing, <laughs> maid. Ma'am? I will visit thee at the lodge. That's hereby. I know where it is situated. Oh, Lord, how wise you are. I will tell thee wonders. With that face? I love thee. Oh, so I hear you say. And so farewell. Fair weather, Afton. Come, Jack Winetta, away. The villain thou shalt fast for thy offences, I'll uh, be pardoned. Oh, well, sir, I hope when I do it, I shall do it on a full stomach. No, thou shalt be heavily punished. More about to you than your fellows, for they are but lightly rewarded. Take away this villain, shut him up. Come, you transgressing slave, away! Oh, let me not be pent up, sir. I will fast, mm. being loose. Mm. 
I do affect the very ground which is base where her shoe which is base her, guided by her foot which is basis the thread. I shall be forsworn, which is a great argument for falsehood if I love. And how can this be true love that is falsely attempted? Love is a familiar, love is a devil, there is no evil angel but God. Ah. Cupid's but sharp is too much odds for a Spaniard's rapier. Adieu, Valor, rust, rapier, be still rum, for thy manager is a love. Yea, he loveth. Assist me some extemporal god of rhyme, for I'm sure I tear turn sonnet. Devise with right pen, for I am for whole volumes in folio. Not ignorant or telling fame doth noise abroad, Navarre hath made a vow. Till painful study shall outwear three years, no woman may approach his silent court. <laughs> Therefore, to seemeth it a needful course before we enter his forbidden gates, to know his pleasure, and on that behalf, bold of your worthiness, we single you as our best moving fair solicitor. Tell him the daughter of the King of France, on serious business craving quick dispatch, importunes personal conference with his grace. Haste, signify so much while we attend like humble visit suitors his high will. Proud of employment, willingly I go. All pride is willing pride, and yours is so. Votaries, my loving lords, that are vile fellows with this virtuous duke. <laughs> Lord Longville is one. Know you the man? Ooh, I, I know him, madam. <laughs> <laughs> At a marriage feast between Lord Perigore and the beauteous heir of Jacques Falconbridge, solemnized in Normandy, mm -hmm. saw I this Longaville, <laughs> a man of sovereign parts he is esteemed, well fitted in arts, most glorious in arms. Nothing becomes him ill if he would it well. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the rest? <laughs> the young Dumain, a well accomplished youth. I saw him <laughs> at the Duke Alonso's once, and much too little of that good I saw is my report to his <laughs> great <laughs> worthy. Another of these students of that time was there with him, if I have heard a truth. Birone, they call him. But a merrier man. Within the limit of becoming that, I never spent an hour's talk with all. <laughs> God bless my ladies, are they all in love that every one her own has gone for such a big decking ornaments of praise? Here comes Boyette. Now, what admittance, Lord? Novar had notice of your fair approach, and he and his competitors in oath were all addressed to meet you, gentle lady, before I came. Mary, thus much I have learnt, he rather means to lodge you in the field, like one that comes here to besiege his court and seek a dispensation for his oath to let you enter his unpeopled house. Here comes Navarre. Fair princess, welcome to the court of Navarre. There I give you back again. 
And welcome I have not yet. The roof of this court is too high to be yours, and welcome to the wide fields too base to be mine. You shall be welcome, madam, to my court. I will be welcome then. Conduct me thither. Uh, hear me, dear lady. I have sworn an oath. Our lady, help my lord. He'll be forsworn. Not for the world, fair madam, by my will. Why? Will shall break it. Will and nothing else. Your ladyship is ignorant what it is. For well, my lord, so his ignorance were wise, where now his knowledge must prove ignorance. I hear your grace has sworn out housekeeping. It is deadly sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. But pardon me, I am too sudden bold. To teach a teacher ill beseemeth me. Vouchsafe to read the purpose of my coming and suddenly resolve me in my suit. Madam, I will, if suddenly I may. You will the sooner that I were away. For you'll prove perjured if you make me stay. Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? Did I not dance with you in Brabant once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? You must not be so quick. It is long of you that spur me with such questions. No, it's too hard. It speeds too fast to a tire. Not till it leave the rider in the mire. What time of day? The hour that fools should ask. Now, Claire, befall your mask. Fair and fool, the face that comes. And send you many lovers. Amen. So you be none. Nay, then will I be gone. Madam. Your father here doth intimate the payment of a hundred thousand crowns, being but the one half of an entire sum dispersed by my father in his wars. But say that he or we, as neither have, received that sum, yet there remains unpaid a hundred thousand more. In surety of the which, one part of Aquitaine is bound to us, although not valued for the money's worth. If then the king, your father, will restore but that one half of that which is unsatisfied, we will give up our right in Aquitaine and hold fair friendship with his majesty. But that, it seems, he little purposes. For here he doth demand to have repaid a hundred thousand crowns, and not demands upon payments of a hundred thousand crowns to have his title live in Aquitaine. The which we much rather had depart with all and have the money by our father lent than Aquitaine so gelded as it is. Dear princess, were not his requests so far from reasons yielding, your fair self should make a yielding against some reason in my breast and go well satisfied to France again. You do the king my father too much wrong and wrong the reputation of your name in so unseeming to confess receipt of that which hath so faithfully been paid. I do protest I never heard of it. And if you prove it, I'll repay it that or yield up Aquitaine. We arrest your word. Boyette. You can produce acquittances for such a sum from special officers of Charles, his father. Satisfy me, sir. So please, your grace, the packet is not come where that and other specialties are bound. Tomorrow you shall have a sight of them. <laughs> it shall suffice me. At which interview all liberal reason I will yield unto. Meantime, receive such welcome at my hands as honor without breach of honor may make tender of to thy true worth. You may not come, fair princess, within my gates, but here without you shall be so received as you shall deem yourself lodged in my heart, though so denied fair harbor in my heart. Your own good thoughts excuse me and farewell. Tomorrow shall we visit you again. Sweet health and fair desires consort you here. Thy own wish, wish I thee in every place. Lady, I do commend thee to mine own heart. Oh, pray you do my commendations. I would be glad to see it. Sir, I pray your word. What lady is that same? The heir of Allen's, Catherine. A gallant lady. Monsieur, fare thee well. I beseech your word, what is she in the white? A woman sometimes, and you saw her in the light. Perchance light in the light, I desire her name. She is an heir of Falconbridge. She is 
Oh, that sweet lady. Not unlike, sir, that may be. What's her name in the cab? Rosalind, by good hap. Is she wedded? Oh, no. To her will, sir, I'll say. Oh, welcome, sir. Indeed. Oh, fair welcome me, sir. Welcome. <laughs> that last is Verone, the merry madcap lord. Not a word with him, but a jest. And every jest but a word. <laughs> it was well done of you to take him at his word. I was as willing to grapple as he was to bore. Oh! <laughs> if my observation very seldom lies by the heart still rhetoric disclosed with eyes, deceive me not now. The bar is infected. With what? With that which we lovers entitle your reason. Why? Methought all his senses were locked in his eye as jewels in crystal for some prince to buy, <laughs> who tendering their own worth from where they were glass, did point you to buy them as long as you pass. His face's own margin did quote such amazes that all I saw his eyes enchanted with gazes. I'll give you equity and all that is his. And you give him for my sake but one loving kiss. Thou art an old lovemonger and speak simply. He is Cupid's grandfather and learns new. Oh, things. then was Venus like a mother, for her father is but grim. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear my bad wishes? No. What then do you see? I, I, oh, where to be gone? Oh. Can't you have a brilliant boy? It is disposed. <laughs> <laughs> you are too hard for me. Go, tenderness of years, take this key, give enlargement to the swain, bring him pestinately hither. I must employ him in a letter to my love. The way is but short away. The swift as that, sir. Hmm? The meaning, pretty ingenious, is not like the metal heavy down slow. Many may on his master, or rather master now. I say let is slow. You are too swift to say so, sir. Is that let slow which is fired from a gun? <laughs> a most acute juvenile, voluble and free of grace. By thy favor, sweet welkin, under sign thy face. Most rude Melchai, the Lord gives thee pleasure. I say, Lacosta, I will enfranchise thee. Oh, marry me to one franchise. I smell some goose in this. <laughs> By my sweet soul, I mean setting thee at liberty and freedoming thy person. Thou art a murid, restrained, captivated, bound. True, true. <laughs> Now you will be my purgation and let me loose. I give thee thy liberty, set thee from durance. And in lieu thereof impose on thee nothing but this. Bear this significant to the country maid, Agenet. For there is remuneration. For the best ward of mine honor is rewarding my dependence. Moth follow. Back to the sequel, aye. Tina Costard, adieu. Adieu, my sweet out of man's flesh. My Tony Jew. Now will I look to his remuneration? Remuneration? Oh, that's the Latin word for three farthings. Three farthings, remuneration. Oh, what's the price of this ink -o? One penny. No, I'll give you a remuneration. Boy, it carries it. Remuneration. Tis a fairer name than French crown. Never buy and sell out of this word. <laughs> ah, my good name, Custard. Exceedingly well met. Pray you, sir. How much coronation ribbon may a man buy for a remuneration? What is a remuneration? Marry, sir, halfpenny farthing. Why, then three farthings worth of silk. Oh, thank you, Worship. God be with you. Oh, stay, stay. I must employ thee. As thou wilt win my favour, good my knave, do one thing for me that I shall entreat. When would you have it done, sir? This afternoon. I will do it, sir. Fare you well. Thou knowest not what it is. 
I shall not, sir, when I have done it. My villain, thou must know first. I'll come to your worship tomorrow morning. It must be done this afternoon. Hark, slave, it is but this. The princess comes to hunt here in the park. And in her train there is a gentle lady. When tongues speak sweetly, then they name her name. And Rosaline, they call her, they ask for her. And to her white hand do thou commend this sealed up counsel. There's thy girdon. Gardon? Oh, most sweet Gardon. It's better than remuneration. Eleven pence farthing better. <laughs> oh, most sweet Gardon. I will do it, sir, in print. <laughs> God on. Ramona Russia. And I forsooth in love. I that have been love's whip. A very beadle to a humorous sigh, a critic, nay, a night watch constable, a domineering pedant o'er the boy than whom no mortal so magnificent. This wimpled, whining, purblind, wayward boy, this senior junior, giant dwarf, Dan Cupid, dread prince of plackets, king of cod pieces, sole imperator and great general of trotting characters. Oh, my heart. And I to be a corporal of his field, and wear his colours like a tumbler's hoop. What I love, I sue, I seek a wife, a woman that is like a German clock. Still a repairing, ever out of frame, never going aright, being a watch, but being watched that it may still go right. Nay, to be perjured, which is worst of all. And among three, to love the worst of all. A whitely wanton with a velvet brow, with two pitch balls stuck in her face for eyes. I am by heaven one that will do the deed, though Argus were her eunuch and her guard, and I to sigh for her, to watch for her, to pray for her. Go to. It is a plague that Cupid will impose for my neglect of his almighty, dreadful little might. Well, I will love, write, sigh, pray, sue, and groan. Some men must love my lady, and some Well, lords, today we shall have our dispatch. On Saturday, we shall return to France. <laughs> then, Forrester, my friend, where is the bush that we must stand and play the murderer in? Hereby, upon the edge of yonder coppice, a stand where you may make the fairest shoot. <laughs> Here comes a member of the Commonwealth. Oh, good dig you, Dan. Oh. <laughs> Pray you, which is the head lady? Thou shalt know her fellow by the rest that have no heads. <laughs> oh. <laughs> which is the greatest lady, the highest? The thickest and the tallest. The thickest and the tallest. It is so. Truth is truth. <laughs> your waist, mistress, were as slender as my wit. One of these maids' girdles for your waist should be fit. <laughs> are you not the chief woman? You are the thickest here. <laughs> <laughs> What's your will, sir? What's your will? I have a letter from Monsieur Baron to one Lady Rosalie. <gasps> Oh, thy letter, thy letter. He's a good friend of mine. Stand aside, good bearer. <laughs> oh, here, boy, it's you can carve. Break up this capon. I am bound to serve. 
Oh, this letter is mistook. It importeth none here. It is written to Jack Quinnetta. <laughs> we will read it, I swear. Break the neck of the wax and everyone give ear. <laughs> By heaven that thou art fair is most infallible. True that thou art beauteous, truth itself that thou art lovely. More fairer than fair, beautiful than beauteous, truer than truth itself, have commiseration on thy heroical vassal. <laughs> King Cofetua set eye upon the pernicious and indubited beggars in Nelophon, <laughs> and he it was that might rightly say, Veni, Vidi, Vici. He came one, saw two, overcame three. Who came? The king. Why did he come? To see. Why did he see? To overcome. <laughs> to whom came he? To the beggar. What saw he? The beggar. Who overcame he? The, the beggar. beggar. <laughs> <laughs> the conclusion is victory. On whose side? The king's. The captive is enriched on whose side? The, the king. <laughs> the beggar. Oh. <laughs> I am the king, for so stands the comparison. Thou the beggar, for so witnesseth thy lowliness. Shall I command thy love I may? Shall I enforce thy love I could? Shall I entreat thy love I will? What shalt thou exchange for rags, robes, for tittles, titles, <laughs> for thyself leave? Thus, expecting thy reply, I profane my lips on thy foot, my eyes on thy picture, and my heart on thy every part. <laughs> Thine in the dearest design of industry, Don Adriano de Amado. What vein of feathers is he that indicted this letter? What vein, what weathercock did you ever hear, Bester? I am much deceived, but I remember the style. Else your memory is bad going on it a while. This Armado is a Spaniard that keeps here in court. Oh, a fantasime, a monaco, and one that makes sport to the prince and his bookmates. Thou, fellow, a word. Who gave thee this letter? I told you, my lord. To whom shouldst thou give it? From my lord to my lady. From which lord to which lady? Oh, from my lord Barone. He's a good master of mine. To one lady of France that he called Rosaline. Thou hast mistaken his letter. Come, lords, away. Here, sweet, put up this. It will be thine another day. Very reverence for truly, and done in the testimony of a good conscience. The deer was, as you know, sanguis uh, in blood. Right was the poppy water, who now hangeth like a jewel on the ear of Kylo, uh, the sky, the wealthy, and the heaven, and anon falleth like a crab on the face of terror, the soil, the land, the earth. <laughs> truly, Master Holly Furnish, the epithets were sweetly varied, like a scholar at the least, but I can assure you it was a buck of the first ad. Sir Nathaniel Hood Credo. Was not an old grey doe, was a pricket. Most barbarous intimation. Uh, yet a, a kind of insinuation, as twere, in via, in way of explication. Uh, Fecari, as twere, uh, replication. Or rather, ostentari, to show, as twere, his inclination. After his undressed, unpolished, uneducated, unpruned, untrained, or rather, unlettered, or rather, it's unconfirmed fashion. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to insert again my hoed cray dough for a deer. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 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 
they do? Who do they do? Who do they do? You two are bookmen. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me by your wit what were a month old at Cain's birth that's not five weeks old as yet? Dick Tinner, good man, Dal. Uh, Dick Tinner, good man, Dal. What's Dick Tinner? Oh, a title to Phoebe. Eh? To Luna. Eh? To the moon. The moon was a month old when Adam was no more, and not not to five weeks when he came to five score. Ha! Oh, the illusion <laughs> holds with the exchange. <laughs> Tis true indeed. The collusion holds in the exchange. Huh? I, I say the illusion holds in the exchange. And I say the pollution holds in the exchange. <laughs> uh, Sir Nathaniel? Uh -huh. oh, would it please you to hear an extemporal epitaph on the death of the deer? Yes, and um, to, uh, to humor the ignorant, I will... Uh, Call the deer the princess killed a prick. Ah. <laughs> Pergay, good master Holy Furnace, Pergay, and uh, so it please you to abrogate scurrility. Oh. I will um, something affect the letter, pa, uh, for it argues facility. <clears throat> ah, the um the prayful princess pierced and pricked a pretty pleasing pricket. Some say a saw, uh, yet not a saw till now made saw with shooting. Oh. The dogs did yell, put L to saw, then Sorel jumps from thicket. Or Pricket saw, or else Sorel, the people fall a hooting. <laughs> if saw be saw, then L to saw makes fifty saws of sorrel, and of one saw I had hundred made by adding but one more L. One more L. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, a rare talent. <laughs> the talent be a claw. See how he claws him with a talent. This is a gift that I have. Simple, simple. A foolish, extravagant spirit. Full of forms, figures, shapes, objects, ideas, apprehensions, motions, revolutions. These are begot in the ventricle of memory, nourished in the womb of Pyamata, and delivered on the mellowing of occasion. Uh, but the gift is good in those in whom it's acute, and I am thankful for it. Oh, sir, I praise the Lord for oh. you, and so may my parishioners, mm. for their sons are well tutored by you, and their daughters profit very greatly under you. <laughs> You're a good member of the Commonwealth. May Hercule. If their sons be ingenious, they shall want no instruction. If their daughters be capable, I shall put it to them. But, sir, uh, we are sapid key, Papa Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 Oh, a soul feminine saluteth us. God give you good morrow, Master Person. Master Person? Good Master Person, be so good as read me this letter. It was given me by Costar and sent me from Don Armado. I beseech you read it. <clears throat> if knowledge be the mark, to know thee shall suffice. Well learned is that tongue that well can me commend. All ignorant that soul that sees thee without wonder. <laughs> Which is to me some praise that I thy parts <laughs> admire. <laughs> thy eye Jove's lightning bears. Thy voice is dreadful thunder. Which not to anger bent is music and sweet fire. Celestial as thou art. Oh, pardon, love, this wrong that sings heaven's praise with such unearthly tone. But, uh, damosella virgin, was this addressed to you? I, sir. I will, um, overglance the superscript. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh. To the snow-white hand of the most beauteous lady Rosaline. Oh. I will look again upon the intellect of the letter for the nomination of the party writing to the person written out. Mm? Uh, mm. Yes. Your ladyship's in all desired employment, Baron, Sir, Sir Nathaniel. Uh, uh, oh, uh, ah. <laughs> this Baron is, is one of the votaries with the king, 
And here he hath framed this letter to a sequence of the Stranger Queens, which accidentally, or, or by the way of progression, has miscarried. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Trip a go, my sweet. Mm. And um, deliver this paper into the most royal hand of the king. It may concern much. Oh, stay not thy compliment. I, I forgive thy duty. Adieu. Uh, uh, uh. Good cost, I go with thee. Have with thee, my oh! girl. Ooh. Mm. I, 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 uh, I, I do dine today at the father's of a certain pupil of mine, where, if before repast it shall please you to uh, gratify the table with a grace, oh. I will, on the privilege that I have with thee, parents of the aforesaid child or pupil, undertake your benvenuto. <laughs> Sir, I do invite you too. Oh, I'm sorry, you shall not say me nay, pauca verba. Away! The gentles are at their game, and we will to our recreation. Hmm? Uh. The king, he is hunting the deer. I am coursing myself. <laughs> They pitch to toil. I am toiling in a pitch, pitch that defiles, defile a foul word. Oh, by the Lord, this love is as mad as Ajax. It kills sheep. It kills me. I, sheep, well proved again on my side. I will not love. If I do, hang me. If faith, I will not. Ah, but her eye. By this light, but for her eye, I would not love her. Yes, for her two eyes. Well, I do nothing in the world but lie. And lie in my throat. I am. I do love. And it hath taught me how to rhyme and be melancholy. And here is part of my rhyme, and here my melancholy. Well, she hath one of my sonnets already. The clown bore it, the fool sent it, and the lady hath it. Sweet clown, sweet a fool, sweetest lady. By the world, I would not care a pin if the other three were in. There comes one with a paper. God, give him grace to groan. I am me. Shot by heaven. Proceed, sweet Cupid. I have stumped him with thy bird boat on the left path. Secrets. So sweet a kiss, the golden sun gives not to. So sweet a kiss, the golden sun gives not to those fresh morning drops upon the rose, as thy eye beams when their fresh rays have smote the night of dew that on my cheeks down flows. Nor shines the silver moon, one half so bright through the transparent bosom of the deep, as doth thy face through tears of mine give light. Thou shinest in every tear that I do weep, no drop but as a coach doth carry thee, so ridest thou triumphing in my woe. Do but behold the tears that well in me, and they thy glory through my griefs will show. But do not love thyself. Then thou wilt keep my tears for glasses and still make me weep. O oh, queen of queens, how far dost thou excel no thought can think, no tongue of mortal tell? How shall she know my griefs? 
I'll drop the paper. Sweet leaves. Shade folly. Oh, it comes here. What long have you been reading? Listen here. Now in thy likeness, one more fool appear. I'm me. I am forsworn. In love, I hope, sweet fellowship and shame. One drunkard loves another of the name. Am I the first to that have been perjured so? I could put thee in comfort, not by two that I know. I fear these stubborn lines lack power to move. Oh, sweet Mariah, empress of my love. These numbers will I tear and write in prose. Oh, rhymes of guards on wanton Cupid's hose disfigure not his shop. Did not the heavenly rhetoric of thine eye, against whom the world cannot hold argument, persuade my heart to this false perjury, vows for thee broke deserve not punishment? A woman I forswore, but I will prove Thou being goddess, I forswore not thee. My vow was earthly, thou a heavenly love. Thy grace being gain, cures all disgrace in me. Vows are but breath, and breath of vapor is. Then thou, fair sun, which on my earth dost shine, exhales this vapor vow. In thee it is, if broken then, it is no fault of mine. If by me broke, what fool is not so wise to lose an oath to win a paradise? God amend us. God amend. We are much out of the way. When shall I send this? Company, stay. All hid, all hid. An old infant play. Like a demigod, here sit I in the sky, and wretched fool secrets heedfully o'er I. More sacks to the mill. Oh, heavens, I have my wish. Dumaine transformed. Four woodcocks in a dish. Oh, most divine Kate. Oh, most profane coxcomb. Oh, that I had my wish. And I had mine. And I mine too, good lord. Amen, so I had mine. Isn't that a good word? I would forget her. But a fever, she reigns in my blood and will remember me. A fever in your blood, why then incision would let her out in sauces. <laughs> oh, sweet Miss Prisium. Once more I'll read the ode that I have writ. Once more I'll mark how love can vary wit. On a day, alack the day, love whose month was ever May, spider blossom, passing fair, playing in the wanton air. Through the velvet leaves, the wind all unseen can passage find, that the lover, sick to death, wished himself the heaven's breath. Do not call it sin in me that I am forsworn for thee. Thou for whom Jove would swear Juno but an Ethiop were, and deny himself for Jove, turning mortal for thy love. This will I send, and something else more plain, that shall express my true love's fasting pain. Do you mean thy love is far from charity, that in love's grief desires society? You may look pale, but I should blush, I know, to be o'erheard and taken napping so. Come, sir, you blush. As is your case as such, you chide at him offending twice as much. You do not love Mariah. Longerfield did never sonnet for her sake compile, nor never lay his wreathed arms athwart his loving bosom to keep down his heart. I have been closely shrouded in this bush and marked you both, and for you both did blush. I heard your guilty rhymes, observed your fashion, saw sighs reek from you, noted well your passion. I, me, says one, oh, Joe, the other cries. One, her hairs were gold, crystal, the other's eyes. 
You would for paradise break faith and troth, and Joe for your love would infringe an oath. What will Biron say when that he shall hear a faith infringed which such zeal did swear? How will he scorn? How will he spend his wit? How will he triumph, leap, and laugh at it? For all the wealth that ever I did see, I would not have him know so much by me. Ah, good my liege, I pray thee pardon me. Good heart, what grace hadst thou thus to reprove these worms for loving that are most in love? Your eyes do make no coaches. Mm -hmm. In your tears there is no certain princess that appears. But are you not ashamed? Nay, are you not, all three of you, to be thus much all shot army? With what strict patience have I sat to see a king transformed to a gnat? Where lies thy grief? Oh, tell me, good domain. And gentle Longueville, where lies thy pain? And where my lieges? All about the breast. A caudal hoe. Too bitter is thy jest. Are we betrayed thus to thy overview? Not you to me, but I betrayed by you. I that am honest. I that hold it sin to break the vow I am engaged in. I am betrayed. Die by keeping company with moonlike men, men of inconstancy. When shall you see me write a thing in rhyme, or groan for Joan, or waste a minute's time in pruning me? Mm. When you shall hear that I will praise a hand, a foot, a face, an eye, a gait, a state, a brow, a breast, a waist, a leg, a limb. Mm. Soft, whither away so fast, a true man or a thief that gallops so. I post from love, good lover, let me go. God bless the king. What present hast thou here? Some certain treason. What makes treason here? Uh, nay, it makes nothing, sir. If it mar nothing, neither the treason and you go away in peace together. I beseech your grace, let this letter be read. Our person misdoubts it. It was treason, he said. Be Rowan, read it over. Where hadst thou it? Costa. Where hadst thou it? Uh, Dan Adramadio, Dan Adramadio. How now, what is in you? Why dost thou tear it? Oh, it's a toy, my liege, a toy. Your grace needs not fear it. It did move him to a passion, therefore let's hear it. It's Phil Brown's writing. Look, as his name. You awesome loggerhead, you are born to do me shame. Uh, guilty, my lord, guilty. I confess, I confess. What? But you three fools let me fool to make up the mess. Oh, dismiss this audience and I will tell you more. Now the number's even. True, true, we are four. Will these turtles be gone? Uh, hence, sirs, away. Walk aside the true folk and let the traitors stay. <laughs> Sweet laws. Sweet lovers, <laughs> let us embrace. As true we are as flesh and blood can be, the sea will ebb and flow, heaven show his face. Young blood doth on the bay, an old decree. We cannot cross the cause why we're born. Therefore, of all hands must we be forsworn. What, did these rent lines show some love of thine? Did they, quoth you? <laughs> Who sees the heavenly Rosaline? But like a rude and savage man of iron, to the first opening of the gorgeous east, bows not his vassal head, and stricken blind kisses the base ground with obedient breast. What zeal, what fury hath inspired thee now? My love, her mistress is a bright moon, she an attending star, scarce seen a light. But what of this? Are we not all in love? Nothing so sure. And thereby all forswore. Then leave this chat. And good Veron, now prove our loving lawful and our faith not torn. Aye. Marry, there's some flattery for this evil. Some authority how to proceed. Some tricks, some quillets, how to cheat the devil. Some sour for perjury. 
Which is more than need. Have at you then, affections, men at arms. Uh, consider what you first did swear unto. We have made a vow to study laws, and in that vow we have forsworn our books. Or when would you, my lord, or you, or you, have found the ground that studies excellence without the beauty of a woman's face? Where is any author in the world teaches such beauty as a woman's eye? For love, first learn it in a lady's eyes, lives not alone, immured in the brain, but with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power, and gives to every power a double power, above their functions and their offices. It adds a precious seeing to the eye. A lover's eyes will gaze an eagle blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound. Love's feelings more soft and sensible than are the tender horns of cockled snails. Love's tongue proves dainty Bacchus gross in taste. For valor is not love a Hercules, still climbing trees in the Hesperides, subtle as Sphinx, as sweet and musical as bright Apollo's lute strung with his hair. And when love speaks. The voice of all the gods make heaven drowsy with the harmony. Never durst poet touch a pen to write until his ink were tempered with love's sighs. From women's eyes this doctrine I derive. They sparkle still the right Promethean fire. They are the books. The arts, the academes, that show, contain, and nourish all the world. Else none at all in aught proves excellent. Then fools you were, these women to forswear. Or keeping what is sworn, you will prove fools. For wisdom's sake, a word that all men love, or for love's sake, a word that loves all men, or for men's sake, the authors of these women, or for women's sake, by whom we men are men. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. It is religion to be thus forsworn, for charity itself fulfills the law, and who can sever love from charity? Thank Cupid, then, and soldiers to the field. Advance your standards and up on them, lords, pell-mell, down with them. But be first advised that in conflict you get the son of them. <laughs> now to plain dealing, ladies close is by. Shall we resolve to woo these girls of France? And win them too. Therefore let us devise some entertainment for them in their tents. First from the park let us conduct them hither, then forward every man attach the hand of his fair mistress. Away, away, let no time be omitted that will be time and may by us be fitted. <laughs> Quid <laughs> oh, oh, sir, I praise God for you. Your reasons at dinner have been sharp and sententious, pleasant without scurrility, witty without affection, audacious without impudency, learned without opinion, and strange without heresy. I did converse this quant. Oh, I did come. Oh, oh <laughs> I did converse this quondam day with a companion. Of the kings, oh. who is intituled, nominated, or called Don Adriano de Vado. Novi hominem tam quam te. Oh. His humor is lofty, his discourse peremptory, his, his tongue filed, his eye ambitious, his gait majestical, and his general behavior vain, ridiculous, and thrasonical. He, uh, he, he's too, um, too, too picked, too, too, too spruce, too, too affected, too orders, too, um, 
Uh, peregrine it, as I may call it. Oh, a most singular and choice episode. He draweth out the thread of his verbosity f f finer than uh, the, the, the staple of his argument. Uh, I abhor such fanatical fantasies, such insociable and prand companions, su su such rackers of orthography as to say doubt, Finney, when he should say doubt, debt, when he should pronounce debt, D-E-B-T, not D-E-T. He, clip is a calf, calf, half, half, neighbor, Bocata, never, nay, abbreviated ne. This is abominable, uh, what he would call abominable. <laughs> it, it insinuated me, that insane ye, hmm? Ne intelligis, Domini, me. to make frantic, lunatic, huh? Oh, last day, bone intelligio. Bone? Oh, bone for Benny. <laughs> Prissian, a little scratched. You'll serve. Ah, for Disney, quis venit. Hmm? Oh, video et gaudio. Chira. Hmm, quare chira, not sirrah. Mena peace, well encountered. Most military, sir. Salutation. It's a great piece of languages, and have stolen the scraps. Oh, they have lived long on the arms basket of words. I marvel thy master hath not eaten thee for a word. For thou art not so long by the head as on a riffy cavalry tool in each attibus. How lot easier to swallow than a flat dragon. Peace, the pill begins. Archman, preambulate. We will be singled for the barbers. Do you not educate youths at the charge house on the top of the mountain? Or Mons the hill? Ah, at your sweet pleasure for the mountain. I do, sans question. <laughs> Sir, it is the king's most sweet pleasure and affection to congratulate the princess at her pavilion in the posteriors of this day, hmm? which the rude multitude call the afternoon. The posteriors of the day, most generous sir, is liable, congruent, and measurable for the afternoon. The word is well chose, cull, choice, sweet, and apt. I do assure you, sir, I do assure you. Posterior of the day. Mm. <laughs> sir, the king is a noble gentleman, mm. and my familiar, <laughs> I do assure you, very good friend. Mm. <laughs> For what is inward between us? Mm. <laughs> Let it pass. I must tell thee, it will please his grace by the world. Sometimes to lean upon my poor shoulder and with his royal finger thus dally with my excrement, hmm? with my mustachios. Ah. <laughs> but, sweetheart, let it pass. By the world, I do recount no fable. Some certain special honors it pleases the greatest to impart to our Mardo, a soldier, a man of travel that hath seen the world. <laughs> but let that pass. The very all of all is, but, sweetheart, I do implore secrecy. The king would have me present the princess, sweet shepherd, with some delightful ostentation, huh? or show a pageant or antic or fiery work. Ah. Now, understanding that the curate and your sweet self are good at such eruptions and sudden breaking out of mirth, as it were, I have acquainted you with all to the end to crave your assistance. Ah. Mm. <sighs> Sir, you shall present before her the nine worthies. Mm. Mm. Sir Nathaniel. Mm. Uh, as concerning some entertainment of time or, or show uh, uh, to be rendered by ourselves, uh, the king's command, and uh, this most gallant gentleman in the uh, posteriors of this day, uh, before the princess, I say, none so fit as to present the nine worthies. Oh, but where shall we find men worthy enough to present them? Oh. Joshua, yourself. Oh. Myself. And uh, this gallant gentleman, uh, uh, Judas Maccabeus. Uh, uh, this swain, because of his great limb or joint, shall pass Pompey the Great. The page, Hercules. Mm. Pardon, sir, error. He is not quantity enough for that worthy sum. He is not so big as the end of his club. Shall I have audience? 
He shall present Hercules in minority. His enter and exit shall be strangling a snake, and I'll have an apology for that purpose. An excellent device. So if any of the audience hiss, you may cry, well done, Hercules. Now thou crush the snake. <laughs> that is the way to make an offence gracious. Though few have the grace to do it. For the rest of the world, is, I will play three myself. Price worthy gentleman. Mm. Shall I tell you a thing? Uh, we attend. We shall have, if this fadge not an antic. Oh. I beseech thee follow. Fire! Good man, dull, thou hast spoken no word all this while. Nor understand none neither, sir. Allo. We shall employ thee. I will make one in a dance or so. Or I will play on the tabor to the worthies and let them dance the hay. No stall on this stall. To our sport. Away. Hearts. We shall be rich ere we depart if fairings come thus plentifully in. <laughs> A lady walled about with diamonds. Look ye what I have from the loving king. Oh, madam, him uh, nothing else along. Oh, nothing but this. Yes, as much love in rhyme as would be crammed up in a sheet of paper, writ on both sides, the leaf, the margin, and all that he was fain to seal on Cupid's name. <laughs> that were the way to make his godhead wax. For he hath been five thousand years aboard. <laughs> I am a shrewd, unhappy gallows, too. But Rosaline you have a favour, too. Who sent it, and what is it? I would you knew. And if my face were but as fair as yours, my favour were as great. Be witness this. <laughs> Nay, I have verses, too, I thank Barone. The number's true. And were the numbering, too, I were the fairest goddess on the ground, I am compared to twenty thousand <laughs> fairies. Oh, he hath drawn my picture in this letter. Anything like? Much in the letters, nothing in the praise. <laughs> <laughs> but, Catherine, what was sent to you from fair to men? Madam, this glove. <laughs> Did he not send you twenty? <laughs> yes, madam, and moreover, some thousand verses of a faithful love. <laughs> A huge translation of hypocrisy, vilely compiled, profound simplicity. <laughs> this and these pearls to me sent long, I bill. The letter is too long by half a mile. <laughs> I think no less. Dost thou not wish in heart the chain were longer and the letter short? Aye, <laughs> or I would these hands might never part. Oh, we are wise girls to mock our lovers so. They are worse fools to purchase mocking so. Same Barone, I'll torture ere I go. Oh, that I knew he were but in by the week. Ah, oh, here comes Boyette, and mirth is in his face. Oh, I'm stabbed with laughter. Where's her grace? Thy news, Boyette. Prepare, madam, prepare. Arm, wenches, arm. Encounters mounted are against your peace. Love doth approach disguised, armied in arguments. Do be surprised, must your wits stand in your own defence, or hide your heads like cowards and fly hence? St. Denis to St. Cupid, <laughs> who are they that charge their breath against us? Say, scout, say. Under the cool shade of a sycamore, I thought to close mine eyes some half an hour, when lo, to interrupt my purposed rest towards that shade, I might behold address the king and his companions. Warily I stole into a neighbor thicket by, <laughs> and overheard what you shall overhear, that by and by disguised they will be here. Their herald is a pretty knavish page that well by heart hath conned his embassage. Action and accent did they teach him there, thus must thou speak and thus thy body bear. And ever and anon they made a doubt presence majestical would put him out for, quoth the king, Angel shalt thou see, <laughs> yet fear not thou, but speak audaciously. But what, but what, come they to visit us? They do, they do, and are apparelled thus, like Muscovites or Russians, as I guess. <laughs> Their purpose is to parley, court, and dance, and every one his love feet will advance unto his several mistress, which they'll know by favour several which they did bestow. And will they so? The 
The gallant shall be tasked. For ladies, we will every one of us be masked. And not a man of them shall have the grace, despite of suit, to see a lady's face. <gasps> Hold, Rosaline, this favour thou shalt wear. So shall the king court thee for his dear. Hold, take thou this, my sweet, and give me thine. So shall Barone take me for Rosaline. <laughs> <laughs> and change your favours too. So shall your loves move contrary, deceived by these removes. And wear the favours most in sight. But in this changing, what is your intent? The effect of my intent is to cross theirs. They do it but in mockery, merriment, and mock for mock is only my intent. Their several counsel they unbosom shall to love's mistook, and so be mocked withal upon the next occasion that we meet with visages displayed to talk and greet. But shall we dance if they desire us to it? No. To the death we will not move a foot. Nor to their pen's speech render we no grace, but while she spoke, each turn away her face. <laughs> Why, that contempt will kill the speaker's heart and quite divorce his memory from his tongue. <laughs> Therefore I do it, and I make no doubt the rest will ne'er come in if he be out. Oh, there's no such sport as sport by sport or thrown, to make theirs ours and ours none but our own. So shall we stay, mocking intended game, while they, well mocked, depart away with shame. <laughs> Trumpet sounds, be masked, the maskers come. A holy parcel of the fairest dames. Let ever turn their backs to mortal views. Their eyes, villain, their eyes. Let ever turn their eyes to mortal views. Out. True, out indeed. Out of your favours, heavenly spirits. Thou art safe, not to behold. Once to behold, rogue. Once to behold with your sunbeaming eyes. With your sunbeaming eyes. They will not answer to that epithet. You will best call it daughter beaming eyes. Do not mark me in that brief. Is this your perfect history? Gone, Rome! What would these strangers? <gasps> know their minds, Boyette. If they do speak our language, tis our will that some plain man recount their purposes. <laughs> know what they would. <laughs> what would you with a princess? Nothing but teas and gentle visitation. What would they say they? Nothing but peas and gentle visitation. Why, that they have, and bid them so be gone. She says you have it, and you may be gone. Uh, say to her, we have measured many miles to tread a measure with her on this grass. They say that they have measured many a mile to tread a measure with you on this grass. It is not so. Ask them how many inches is in one mile. If they have travelled many, the measure then of one is easily told. If to come hither you have measured miles and many miles, the princess bids you tell how many inches doth fill up one mile. Tell her we measure them with weary steps. She hears herself. How many weary steps of many weary miles you have all gone are numbered in the travel of one mile? We number nothing that we spend for you. Our duty is so rich, so infinite, that we may do it still without a count. Much safe to show the sunshine of your face, that we, like savages, may worship it. My face is but a moon. And clouded, too. <laughs> Blessed are clouds to do as such clouds do. Watch safe. 
bright moon and these thy stars to shine, those clouds removed upon our watery eye. Oh, vain petition, beg a greater matter. Thou now requests but moonshine in the water. Then in our measure vouchsafe but one change. <gasps> oh, thou bids me beg, this begging is not strange. Play music, then. Right. Nay, you must do it soon. <laughs> not yet. Right. No dance. Thus change I like the moon. Will you not dance? How come you thus is strange? You took the moon at full, but now she's changed. Yet still she's the moon and I the man. The music plays. Walt, save some motion <gasps> to it. Our ears vouchsafe it. But your legs should do it. Since you are strangers and come here by chance, we'll not be nice. Take hands. We will not dance. Why take we hands then? Only to part friends. Curtsy, sweethearts. And so the measure ends. Oh, more <gasps> measure of this measure be not nice. We can afford no more at such a price. Price you yourselves. What buys your company? Your absence only. That can never be. Then cannot we be bought? And so adieu. Twice to your visor, and half once to you. If you deny to dance, let's hold more chat. In private, then. I'm best pleased with that. White-handed mistress, one sweet word with thee. Honey and milk and sugar, there are three. One word in secret. Let it not be sweet. Thou greest my gall. Gall, bitter. Ha-ha! <laughs> Meat! Will you what safe with me to change a word? Name it. Fair lady. Say so. Fair lord, take that for your fair lady. Please it you as much in private, and I'll bid adieu. What? Was your visor made without a tongue? I know the reason, lady. Why you ask? Oh, for your reason, quickly, sir, I love. You have a double tongue, this in your mask. One bird with you in private, ere I die. Please, sir. The butcher hears your cry. The tongues of mocking winches are as keen as is the razor's edge invisible, cutting a smaller hair than may be seen. Above the sense of sense, so sensible seemeth their confidence. Their conceits have wings fleeter than arrows, bullets win thought. Swifter things. Not one word more, my name. Wrinkles, wrinkles. <laughs> By heaven, all dry, beaten with pure scoff. Hello, Madwenches. You have simple wits. Twenty adieus, my frozen muscovies. <laughs> So oh, they were all in lamentable cases. The king was weeping ripe for a good word. <laughs> Rohan swore himself out of us. <laughs> Dumaine was at my service and his sword. No point, quoth I. My servant straight was out. No long of you said I came o'er his heart and trow you what he called me. Quam, perhaps. <laughs> yes, in good faith. Go, sickness as thou art. <laughs> Wits have worn plain statue caps. <laughs> but will you hear? The king is my love sworn. <laughs> and quick Perone has plighted faith to me. <laughs> and Longaville was for my service born. <laughs> Dumaine is mine, as sure as bark on tree. <laughs> Madam and pretty mistresses, give ear. Immediately they will again be here in their own shapes, for it can never be they will digest this harsh indignity. Will they return? They will, they will, God knows, and leap for joy, though they are lame with blows. Therefore change favours, and when they repair, blow like sweet roses in this summer air. How blow, how blow, speak to be understood. <laughs> Fair ladies' masks are roses in their bud. Dismasked, their damask sweet commixture shown, are <laughs> angels veiling clouds, or roses blow. Oh, the perplexity. What shall we do if they return in their own shapes to rule? Good man, if by me you will be advised, let's mock them still, as well known as disguised. 
first. <laughs> Let us complain to them what fools were here, disguised <laughs> like Muscovites in shapeless gear, and wonder what they were and to what end their shallow shows and prologue vilely penned and their rough carriage so ridiculous should be presented at our tent to us. Ladies, withdraw. The gallants are at hand. Quick to our tents as Rose run all the land. <laughs> Now, sir, God save you. Where's the princess? Gone to her tent. Please, at your majesty, command me any service to her that asked. That she vouchsafe me audience for one word. I will. And so will she, I know, my lord. This fellow pecks up wit as pigeons peas, and utters it again when God doth please, and can carve, too, and lisp. Why, this is he that kissed his hand away in courtesy. This is... The flower that smiles on everyone to show his teeth as white as Whaley's bone. <laughs> and consciences that will not die in debt, pay him the due of honey-tongued boyette. Now blister on his sweet tongue with my heart, and put Armado's page out of his part. See when it comes, behavior, what wert thou till this madman showed thee? And what art thou now? All hail, sweet madam, and fair time of day. Fair in all hail is foul, as I can see. Construe my speeches better, if you may. Then wish me better. I will give you leave. We came to visit you, and purpose now to lead you to our court, about sacredly. This field shall hold me, and so hold your vow. Nor God nor I delights in perjured men. Oh. You have lived in desolation here, unseen, unvisited, much to our shame. It is not so, my lord, it is not so, I swear. We have had pastimes here and pleasant game. A mess of Russians left us but of late. How, madam? Russians? Aye, in truth, my lord, trim gallants, full of courtship and of state. Mad! Speak true. It is not so, my lord. My lady, to the manner of the days, in courtesy gives undeserving praise. We four, indeed, confronted were with four in Russian habit. Here they stayed an hour and talked apace. And in that hour, my lord, they did not bless us with one happy word. I dare not call them fools, but this I think, when they are thirsty, fools would fain have drink. This jest is dry to be. Uh, my gentle sweet, uh, your wit makes wise things foolish. When we greet with eyes best seeing, heaven's fiery eye, by light we lose light. Your capacity is that nature that to your huge store, wise things seem foolish and rich things but poor. Well, this proves you wise and rich, for in my eye... I am a fool and full of poverty. But that you take what doth to you belong, it were a fault to snatch words from my tongue. Oh, I am yours, and all that I possess. All the fool mine. I cannot give you less. Which of the visors was it that you wore? Where? When? What visor? Why well, demand you this? There, then, that visor, that superfluous case that hid the worse and showed the better face. We were described. They'll mock us now downright. Let us confess and turn it to a jest. Amazed, my lord. Why looks your highness, sir? Help! Hold his brows, you swoon. Why look you pale? Seasick, I think, coming from Muscovy. <laughs> Thus pour the stars down plagues for perjury. Can any face of brass hold longer out? Here stand I, lady. Dart thy skill at me, bruise me with scorn, confound me with a flout, thrust thy sharp wit quite through my ignorance, cut me to pieces with thy keen conceit. And I will wish thee never more to dance, nor never more in Russian habit wait. Oh, never will I trust to speeches pen, nor to the motion of a schoolboy's tongue, nor never come in visor to my friend, nor ruin rhyme like a blind harper's song. 
taffeta phrases, silken terms precise, three piled hyperboles, spruce affectation figures pedantical. These summer flies have blown me full of maggot ostentation. I do forswear them. And I here protest by this white glove, I'll wipe the hand, God knows. Henceforth, my wooing mind shall be expressed in russet yeas and honest cursy noes. And to begin, wench, so God help me, Lord, my love to thee is sound, sans crack or flaw. Sans, sans, I pray you. Yet I have a trick of the old rage. Bear with me, I am sick. I will leave it by degrees. Oh, soft. Let us see. But Lord, have mercy on us on those three. They are infected. In their hearts it lies. They have the plague and caught it of your eyes. These lords are visited. You are not free, for the Lord's tokens on you do I see. Teach us, sweet madam, for our rude transgression some fair excuse. The fairest is confession. Were not you here but even now disguised? Madam, I was. And were you well advised? I was, fair madam. When you then were here, what did you whisper in your lady's ear? That more than all the world I did respect her. When she shall challenge this, you will reject her. Upon mine honor, no. Peace. Peace forbear. Your oath once broke, you force not to forswear. Despise me when I break this oath of mine. I will, and therefore keep it. Rosaline, what did the Russian whisper in your ear? Madam, he swore that he did hold me dear as precious eyesight, and did value me above this world, adding thereto, moreover, that he would wed me, or else die my lover. God give thee joy of him. The noble lord most honorably doth uphold his word. What mean you, madam? By my life, my troth, I never swore this lady such an oath. By heaven you did, and to confirm it plain you gave me this. But take it, sir, again. My faith, and this the princess I did give. I knew her by this jewel on her sleeve. Pardon me, sir. This jewel did she wear, and Lord Barone, I thank you, Miss my dear. What? Will you have me or your pearl again? Uh, neither of either. I remit both twain. I see the trick on it. <laughs> Here was a consent, knowing aforehand of our merriment, to dash it like a Christmas comedy. Some carry tale, some peas man, some slight zany, some mumble news, some trencher night, some dick that smiles his cheek in years and knows the trick to make my lady laugh when she is disposed, told our intents before, which once disclosed, the ladies did change favours. And then we, following the signs, wooed but the sign of she, much upon this tis. Full merrily hath this brave marriage, this career, been run. No, he is tilting straight. Peace. Ah, welcome, pure wit. Thou partest the fair prey. Oh, Lord, sir, they would know whether the three worthies shall come in or no. Are there but three? No, sir, but it's verifying for every one presents three. That three times twice is nine. Not so, sir. Under correction, sir, I hope it is not so. You cannot beg us, sir, I can assure you, sir, we know what we know. I hope, sir, that three times thrice, sir. Is not nine? Under correction, sir, we know where until it doth amount. By heavens, I always took three threes for nine. Oh, Lord, sir, it were pity you should get your living by reckoning, sir. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it? Oh, Lord, sir, well, the parties themselves, sir, the actor, sir, will show where until it doth amount. For my own part, I am, as they say, to perfect one man in one poor man, Pompey on the great, sir. A thou, one of the worthies. Please, then, to think me worthy of Pompey the Great. <laughs> for mine own part, I know not the degree of the worthy, but I am to stand for it. Go, bid them prepare. We will turn it finally off, sir. We will take some care. 
They roam, they will shame us. Let them not approach. But we are shame proof, my lord. And it is some policy to have one show worse than the king's and his company. <laughs> I say they shall not come. Nay, my good lord, let me your ruling now. That sport best pleases that doth least know how. <laughs> the zeal strives to content, and the contents dies in the seal of that which it presents. Their form confounded makes most form in mirth, while great things laboring perish in their mirth. The right description of our sport, my lord. Anointed, I implore as much expense of thy sweet royal bride as will utter a breath of words. Does this man serve God? Why ask you? He speaks not like a man of God's making. That is all one, my fair sweet honey monarch. For I protest, schoolmaster is a seething fantastical. <laughs> too, too vain, too, too vain. <laughs> but we will put it, as I say, to Fortuna de la Guerra. <laughs> I wish you the peace of mind, the most royal compliment. Here is like to be a good presence of worthies. He presents Hector of Troy, the swain Pompey the Great, <laughs> the parish curate Alexander, Armado's page Hercules, <laughs> <laughs> the pedant Judas Maccabeus, and if these four worthies in their first show thrive, these four will change habits and present the other five. But there are five in the first show. You are deceived, it is not so. The pedant, the braggart, the hedge priest, the fool, and the boy. The whole world again cannot pick out five such. Take each one in his vein. <laughs> <laughs> the ship is under sail, for here she comes amain. Oi, Pompey, and... You lie, you are not he. Oi, Pompey, and... With Limon's head on knee. Well said, old mocker. I must needs be friends with thee. Oi, Pompey, and... Pompey surnamed the big, the great... Oh, Roy is great, sir. Pompey's surname the great. <clears throat> They're often filled with charge and shield. They'd make my fault a sweat. And travelling along this coast, I hear him come, by chance, to lay my arms before the legs of this sweet lass of France. Your ladyship would say thanks, Pompey. I had done. Great thanks, great Pompey. Oh. <clears throat> it was not so much worth. Well, I hope I was perfect. I made a little folding grace. My hat to a half penny. Pompey proves the best word. <laughs> when in the world I lived, I was the world's commander. By east, west, north, and south. I spread <laughs> my conquering might. My scotch and plain declares that I am Alice. And uh, your nose says no, you're not, for it stands too right. Your nose smells no in this most tender smelling night. The conqueror is dismayed. Proceed, good Alexander. Well, in the world I live. Who's the world's commander? Most true, tis right, you were so, Alessandra. Pompey the Great. Your servant and postard. Take away the conqueror. Take away, Alessandra. Oh, sir, you have overthrown Alexander the Conqueror. You will be scraped out of the painted cloth for this. But your lion that holds his pole axe sitting on a closed stool will be given to Ajax. He will be the ninth worthy. A conqueror and a fear to speak? Oh, run away for shame, Alexander! Oh. There, I shall please you. A foolish, mild man, an honest man, look you, and soon dash. But he's a marvellous good neighbour, Faith, and a very good bowler. <laughs> but for Alexander, alas, you see, is a little lower party. <laughs> Worthies are coming, we'll speak their mind in some other sort. Oh. 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 Great Hercules is presented by this imp, <laughs> whose club killed Cerberus, that three-headed Canus. And when he was a babe, a child, a shrimp, thus did he strangle serpents in his mass. <laughs> <laughs> Hunyam, 
he seemeth in minority, ergo I come with this apology. State and I sit and vanish. <laughs> <laughs> Judas, I am. Uh, Judas? Uh, not Iscariot, sir. <clears throat> Judas, I am. Eclipped Maccabeus. Judas? Maccabeus clipped is plain Judas. A kissing traitor. How thou proved, Judas? Judas, I am. The more Eclip shame for you, Judas. What mean you, sir? To make Judas hang himself. Oh, begin, sir. You are my elder. Well, follow. Judas was hanged on an elder. I will not be put out of countenance. Because Judas has I... no face. But what is this? A sit-on head. The head of a bodkin. A death's face in a ring. The face of an old Roman coin, scarce seen. <laughs> the pommel of Caesar's falchion. And now forward, for we have put thee in countenance. You have put me out of countenance. False, we have given thee faces. But you have outfaced them all. And were thou a lion, we would do so. And therefore, as he is an ass, let him go. And so would you, sweet Jew. <laughs> Nay, why dost thou stay? For the latter end of his name? For the ass to the Jew, give it him. Jew, that's away! <laughs> <laughs> this is not generous, not gentle, not humble. A light for Monsieur Judas, it grows dark, he may stumble. <laughs> Alas, poor Maccabees, how hath he been baited? Hide thy head, Achilles. Here comes Hector in arms. Though my mocks come home by me, I will now be merry. Hector was but a Trojan in respect of this. But is this Hector? I think Hector was not so clean timbered. His legs too big for Hector. More calf, sir. <laughs> no, he's best endued in the small. <laughs> <laughs> this cannot be Hector. He's a god or a painter, for he makes faces. The army potent Mars of Lanthes the Almighty gave Hector a gift. A gilt the, nutmeg. A lemon. Stuck with clothes. No, cloven. Please. <laughs> The army put in Mars of Lanthus the Almighty gave Hector a gift, the heir of Ilion. A man so brief that certain he would fight he. From morn to night, out of his pavilion, I am that flower. That mint. That columbine. Oh, sweet Lord Longerville, rain thy tongue. I must rather give it the rain, for it runs against Hector. I and Hector's a greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> The sweet wall man is dead and rotten. Sweet chucks beat not the bones of the buried. When he breathed, he was a man. But I will forward with my device. Sweet royalty bestow on me the sense of hearing. Speak, brave Hector. We are much delighted. I do adore thy sweet grace, sleeper. Loves her by the foot. He may not by the yard. This Hector far surmounted Alibol. The party is gone. Hello, Hector. Mm. She is gone. She's two months on her way. What means stop? Faith, unless you play the honest Trojan, the poor wench is cast away. She's quick. The child brags in her belly already, and it's his, yours. What? Dost thou infeminize me among golden fates? But thou shalt die. Then will you be whipped for Jack Winnetta that is quick for you, and hang for Pompey that is dead for you. Oh, oh no. scrap, Pompey! Renowned Pompey! Face for the big, big, big Pompey! Pompey the huge! Hector tremble! Pompey's move, boy, eighties, boy, eighties! Stir them on, stir them on! Hector will challenge him! I may have no more man's blood in his belly, the more sub of thee! Well, uh, by the North Pole, I do challenge thee. I'll not fight with a pole like a northern man! I'll slash! I'll do it by the sword. Mm. I'll be pray you. Let me borrow my arms again. Okay? Room for the incense, well, please. Do it in my shirt. Oh, most resolute Pompey. Costa, mm. let me take you a buttonhole, Lord. Well, well. Do you not see Pompey as a casing for the combat? What mean you? You will lose your reputation. Uh, uh, gentlemen and soldiers, pardon me. I will not combat in my shirt. Now, you may not deny it. Pompey has made the challenge. A sweet blood, as I both may and will. And your reason for it. The naked truth of it is that I have no shirt. <laughs> I go wool word for penance. True. <laughs> oh, but he was enjoying the <laughs> <laughs> for one thing. No. Since when I swore he wore none of the beast that of Jack Winnetta's and that he wears next to his heart for a favor. <laughs> God save you, madam. Welcome, Bacardi. But that thou interrupts our merriment. Ah. 
I'm sorry, madam, for the news I bring is heavy in my tongue. The king, your father. Dead for my life. Even so, my tale is told. Worthies away. The scene begins to cloud. For mine own part, I breathe free breath. I have seen the day of wrong through the little hole of discretion, and will right myself like a soldier. How fares your majesty? Boyet, prepare. I will away tonight. Madam, not so, I do beseech you. Stay. Prepare, I say. I thank you, gracious lords, for all your fair endeavors, and entreat out of a new sad soul that you vouchsafe in your rich wisdom to excuse or hide the liberal opposition of our spirits, if over boldly we are borne ourselves in the converse of breath. Your gentleness was guilty of it. Farewell, worthy lord. A heavy heart bears not a nimble tongue. Excuse me so, coming too short of thanks for my great suit so easily obtained. The extreme parts of time extremely forms all causes to the purpose of his speed. And often at his very loose decides that which long process could not arbitrate. And though the mourning brow of progeny forbid the smiling courtesy of love, the holy suit that fain it would convince. Yet since love's argument was first on foot, let not the clouds of sorrow justle it from what it purposed. Since to wail friends lost is not by much so wholesome profitable as to rejoice in friends but newly found. I understand you not. My griefs are double. Honest, plain words best pierce the ear of grief, and by these bodges understand the king. For your fair sakes have we neglected time, played foul play with our oaths. Your beauty, ladies, hath much deformed us, fashioning our humours even to the opposed end of our intents. And what in us hath seemed ridiculous, those heavenly eyes that look into these faults suggested us to make. Therefore, ladies, our love being yours, the error that love makes is likewise yours. We to ourselves prove false by being once false, forever to be true to those that make us both. Fair ladies, you. We have received your letters full of love, your favors, the ambassadors of love, and in our maiden council rated them at courtship, pleasant jest, and courtesy as bombast and as lining to the time. But more devout than this in our respects have we not been, and therefore met your loves in their own fashion, like a merriment. Our letters, madam, showed much more than jests. So did our looks. We did not quote them, sir. Now, at the latest minute of the hour, grant us your loves. Time, methinks, too short to make a world without end bargaining. No, no, my lord, your grace is perjured much, full of dear guiltiness. And therefore this. If for my love, as there is no such cause, you would do aught, this shall you do for me. Your oath I will not trust, but go with speed to some forlorn and naked hermitage, remote from all the pleasures of the world. There stay, until the twelve celestial signs have brought about the annual reckoning. If this austere insociable life change not your offer made in heat of blood, if frosts and fasts, hard lodging and thin weeds nip not the gaudy blossoms of your love, but that they bear this trial and last love, then, at the expiration of the year, come, challenge me, challenge me by these deserts, and by this virgin palm, now kissing thine, I will be thine. 
until that instant, shut my woeful self up in a mourning house, raining the tears of lamentation for the remembrance of my father's death. If this thou do deny, let our hands part, neither entitled in the other's heart. If this, or more than this, I would deny to flatter up these powers of mine with rest, the sudden hand of death close up mine eyes. Hence, turn with them. My heart is in thy breast. And what to me, my love? And what to me? You must be perjured too. Your sins are racked. You are a taint with faults and perjury. Therefore, if you my favor mean to get, at twelve months shall you spend and never rest, but seek the weary beds of people sick. But what to me, my love? But what to me, a wife? A beard. Fair health and honesty. The threefold love, I wish you all these three. Oh, shall I say, I thank you, gentle wife? Not so, my lord. The twelve months and a day I'll mark no words that smooth-faced wooers say. Come when the king does to my lady come. Then if I have much love, I'll give you some. I'll serve thee true and faithfully till then. Oh, yet swear not. This I'll be forsworn again. What says Maria? At the twelve months' end, I'll change my black gown for a faithful friend. Stay with patience, but the time is long. The like of you, few taller are so young. Studies, my lady. Now, mistress, look on me. Oft have I heard of you, my lord, the Rome, before I saw you. And the world's large tongue proclaims you for a man replete with mocks, full of comparisons and wounding flouts, which you on all estates will execute that lie within the mercy of your wit. To weed this wormwood from your fruitful brain, and therewithal to win you, if you please, without the which I am not to be won. You shall, this twelve-month term, from day to day, visit the speechless sick, and still converse with groaning wretches. And your task shall be, with all the fierce endeavor of your wit, to enforce the pain and impotent to smile. To move wild laughter in the threat of death. It is impossible, it cannot be. No, mirth cannot move a soul in agony. Why, that's the way to choke a jiving spirit, whose influence is begot of that loose grace that shallow laughing hearers give to fools. The jest's prosperity lies in the ear of him that hears it, never in the tongue of him that makes it. Then, if sickly ears, deft with the clamor of their own dear groans, will hear your idle scorns. Continue then, and I will have you and that fault with all. But if they will not, throw away that spirit, and I will find you empty of that fault, right joyful of your reformation. Oh, a twelve months. Or before what will befall me. I'll jest a twelve month in a hospital. Ay, sweet my lord, and so I take my leave. No, madam, we will bring you on your way. Our wooing doth not end like an old play. Jack hath not Jill. These ladies' courtesy might well have made our sport a comedy. Come, sir, at once but a twelve month and a day, and then we'll end it. That's too long for the play. Sweet majesty, vouchsafe me. 
Was not that Hector? The worthy knight of Troy. I will kiss thy royal finger. I am a votary. I have vowed to Hecheneta to hold the plough of our sweet love for the air. But most esteemed greatness, will you hear the dialogue that the two learned men have compiled in praise of the owl and the cuckoo? It should have followed in the end of our show. Call them forth quickly. We will do so. Ola, approach. This side is Ion's winter. This bird, the spring. The one maintained by the owl, the other by the cuckoo. The begin. You that way, we this way. 